Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here. I'm out here. It's 12.53 in the morning, and uh, me and my wife does Bible study most every night, and uh, today we did a study in Psalm 104, and I've always enjoyed Psalm 104. It's a very unique chapter. It gives you the um, importance of God. It shows you how God shows himself as nothing else can. I want to start out in Psalm 104, and I'm going to probably go down to about verse 18 maybe or so. And then we'll pick back up on the next video. Psalm 104. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God. See, you notice David has a personal God here. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. You know, the majesty that we see in this world is Queen Elizabeth. She is royalty. She is majesty. She has servants. She has uh, people all around her. She don't have to lift a finger to do nothing. But that majesty of the queen versus the majesty of the God of the universe don't even compare who coverest thyself with light as with a garment? Just try to imagine somebody that is full of light that covers himself like a garment who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. I mean, a, a, a window curtain pulls it across the sky and across the universe. What? How do you explain that? I'm just reading you the words of what the Bible says here. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters? That tells you he doesn't need any foundation. He is the foundation. Who maketh the clouds his chariot? You know, you can take the clouds of this whole earth and according to this, the size of the clouds and the size of the chariot leaves you just literally spellbound. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? Who maketh his angels spirits? His ministers of flaming fire. Now, you know what? Let me stop and, and say something right here. The reason that the church world is in the condition it is today is it very well could be that maybe the Lord hasn't called some of the ministers that says they are ministers. The reason they're not effective is because they, they do not have the flaming fire. I'm not talking about the flaming fire of Pentecost. I'm not referring to the Pentecostal church or the charismatic church or the holiness church because most everybody feel like, well, they're one step higher than the rest of the people on the religious ladder. I'm not talking about that. It says, it says, who maketh his angel spirits his ministers a flaming fire. You know, if this message tonight is not mixed with flaming fire, I'm wasting my time, I'm wasting your time. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. What God did, God did, he did it right. 
Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment, meaning everything that there is about the earth. The water stood above the mountains, talking about the oceans now. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys into the place which thou hast founded for them. See, God even has an order when it comes to where the oceans are. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over. You know, it's amazing how God made the world. He knows the world better than anybody. He knows the world better than any meteorologist. A meteorologist will tell you that it was going to rain, and it doesn't rain. Today, they was forecasting rain this afternoon, but it didn't rain. It come close to raining, but it didn't rain. It says, Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. See, God is in full control of everything. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. All you got to do is go to Gatlinburg, go up into the scenic mountains, and you'll see streams all over the place, even in the mountain area. There's streams that are running everywhere. See, that tells you that God is able to supply. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. See, God even looks out for the insignificant, the things that doesn't have a soul. God looks out after. By them shall the fowls of the heavens have their habitation, meaning where the springs and the valleys are, where this this cover is, where it's talking about the cover. By them shall the fowls of heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. The birds sing among the branches. You don't hear the birds at night. Listen to what it says in verse 13. He watereth the hills from his chambers. His chambers controls the water that hits this earth. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works, meaning trees that is meant to grow oranges grows oranges. Trees that's meant to grow apples grows apples. And it says that they are satisfied with the fruit of thy works. God is the one that grows the fruit. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth. See, God even develops the food before we ever get hungry. He's able to develop the food before we even have a need of the food. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man. See, he knows how to bring joy. And oil to make his face to shine. And bread which strengthens man's heart. God knows that we need spirit physical food in order to be able to survive and live. And God is able to supply physical food. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. You know, these trees in my yard, they are flat full of water and sap because it has been raining every day, it seems like, for three or four days. Water's going under where my vehicles are. I can't get it out. I've tried to to bank off so that no water could get in. You know where it's coming in? It's coming in from the outside. 
It ain't running in, it's coming in. Gravity is bringing it in. It says here, the trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted. I told my wife tonight, you know, the Lord didn't go out there with a planter and start planting the trees. I believe he just spoke it into existence. Just like certain areas have pine trees, certain areas have oak trees, certain areas have maple trees. We don't have maple trees down here in Florida to get maple syrup out of that I know of. Where the birds make their nests. I mean, talking about in the places of where these trees are, as for the store, the fir trees are her house. See, God is able to figure out everything, and David is seeing all this when he writes this. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats. See, the goats have feet on them. And they like hinds feet. They like deer feet that is able to crawl up on the side of a cliff and a hill. They don't have to worry about falling because God has developed their bodies to be able to handle that area. And the rocks for the conies. I went and looked up that word conies. And the place that I looked up, it has a reference of Proverbs 30 and verse 26. And it talked about the folks that live in the rocks or live in the place of the rocks. You know what that tells me? That tells me that God looks at every person the same way. People that live in New York City is not the only people that God looks at. He looks at the people that are far hidden in the places where you can't hardly get to. God is a fair, just God every single day. So that's the reason he says here, and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. You know, I'm going to stop right here because I want to finish this up tomorrow night. This is a sign of just how good and wonderful that God is. When I read this, I think of, I, I literally today, literally had to shake my head. I've read it many times before. But when you go back and you read God's word again and again and again, and you know what you're going to see when you get here, I just thought, you know what? David must have had a real genuine love for the Lord to be able to write such things. And you know, the Holy Spirit had to have told him what to write down. That's the reason the Bible says that the word of God was 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 told what to write that the spirit of god controlled the letters and the and the and the words that was said and as we see when we get on into these other verses we're going to see even a little bit more and how he closes out psalm 104 i can't wait i love to sit in here right now tonight and make another video right now and post it together, but I'm not going to do that. But you know what this is actually telling me? This, These verses so far are verses that are for the saved, the people that are saved, the people that are born again, the people that know Jesus. If you're in here today and you happen to know Jesus, then all these things so far is promises to you. And you should be able to say, praise ye the Lord, because it says in verse one, in verse one of 104, bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my God, thou art very great.
Is he great to you? Tune in tomorrow, or maybe it would be um, Monday, for the conclusion of Psalm 104. I'm looking forward to bringing it. Thank y'all for listening.